Welcome, my dear students of class 12 to this English class with me, your tutor, Atinio Secose. Today, our topic is called Sunshine Susan by Deepa Kiran. So let's first take a look at the author's background here. You will find that the author is a founder, in fact, one of the founder of Story Arts India. In other words, she founded this uh, and tried to help uh, story writers. And she, we can say that she is a very versatile person in the sense that she is very talented because she is not only a writer but also uh, contributed in the AIR, that is All India Radio, uh, as a compare. And also she lends her voice in a lot of animated works or audio works. So we can say that she's very versatile. And not only that, she also taught in a lot of central schools about teaching of English and so on. So that's what we have here. And interestingly, we have a story that also uh, very much similar, we can say, to her success story as a girl who had achieved success. So what we have here is Sunshine Susan is also a story about a young girl who succeeded at all odds who, because who was very determined, brave and courageous. So let's take a look at this story. We are going to take a look at this story from um, from the viewpoint of voices. So when I say voices, we are talking about here views and opinions. Views and opinions that can be uh, framed by culture, that can be framed by traditions, it can be carried over or reflected by people in the community, in the neighborhood, society, or the world at large. So from that line, we are going to take a look at the character and understand the story. So let's take a look at the context of character voices here. Let's first take a look at the mother. The mother is playing a typical role that is of a mother who is expected to uh, work at home and does not go out, necessarily go out and uh, work for, in order to earn for the family. So in the first scene, we find her waking her daughter up. And the family also uh, represents the voices. That is the voice of telling this young girl, our heroine, Susan, that is, to not to go to school, in other words, because they do not have enough money and that it, a girl child is not expected to be educated. And also we have here the voices of the neighbor telling or saying that why are they still sending her to uh, schools or college for education? So these are the voices that are being carried over. But we are going to find out what did Susan do in order to break away from all this and strike her independence? Now, we have here her brother, that is Sandy, who also teases her as uh, saying that she is dainty. Dainty here means a pretty girl, uh, you know, we have here a picture of a helpless girl. Simply, in fact, the society expect a young girl to be simply pretty and to get ready to get married when they come of age. So uh, that kind of way, the brother is also teasing and we know that Susan does not like to be teased or called as dainty. That is the, the last thing that she wants to become. So uh, interestingly, there are two voices, that is the grandmother and Mrs. Andrew, who gives very encouraging and good advices to Susan. So we are going to find out more in detail what those are. Now let's take a look at the setting. The setting is interestingly a typical Indian village setting and a village called Sabato. So we all know that when it, uh, when it comes to villages, villages are uh, a little far removed from the main cities or um, uh, they lack the advantage of you know, accessibility of hospital or we can say education. And also not just that, uh, it is, we can say in, uh, in, we can say that it can also, the views and opinions can also be quick, narrow-minded. So our heroine, that is Susan, is living in such kind of a village. And also we understand from the story that it is a joint family wherein there is the grandmother, the parents, the brother Sandy, and the father is the only bread earner here. He is a beekeeper who uh, makes his livelihood through farming and, you know, as Again, a typical setting of the patriarchal society that we lived in. And um, here, 
the male or the father is expected to be the bread earner instead of the woman. And so, interestingly, the girl that is Susan is also expected to become um, a housewife in future. So that's what we have here. And uh, no doubt the father works hard, uh, works very hard and tries to keep the family. And you know, we learned that he would return at night doing double jobs and then a feast is prepared for him. So that kind of a typical setting that we, we find here. Since the father is the bread earner, the only bread earner, such kind of reverence or respect is given and treatments are given to parents. So we have here the setting of a village, the setting of a typical patriarchal society. And uh, remember, another instance is that the father also tell, uh, told our heroine, that is Susan, that it is not a girl's job. You know, when the girl or Susan insisted to go and see the bee farm, that was what she was told. So here we have here the voices of the community, the society, or even the family, or even the neighbors saying to a girl child that it is not a child's role to become educated. It is not a child's role to go out and work and make a living out of it. So that's what we have here. And we are going to find out what is that shine or that gift that uh, Susan has in order to break away from it. Remember, we are talking about here a success story. So our heroine or the protagonist, that is the main character in the story, is a girl child, a young girl child. And the story backtracks a lot to uh, when she was 16 or when she was 17, what the people said or what the family said. Now, in the opening scene, remember, like I said, she was expected to wake up early to, you know, the mother was uh, shouting at her, help me clean, dig potatoes and so on. So that is the typical chores that a girl child is expected to do at home. And then again, education of the girl child is very much not invested upon. So that's why we find the family, even though uh, uh, no doubt they are struggling with money, but uh, that's, that was one of the excuse. But what did Susan do? She tried to make a living or in other words she tried to uh, work and earn money on her own and try to pay for her tuitions so that is why we find that she is very much uh, inquisitive she is very much uh, curious inquisitive and curious in the sense that she always want to learn and gain new experiences you know her friends called her robot because she's always full of energy and that kind of good energy that brave courageous determined uh, character traits that she has was recognized by Mrs. Andrew who encouraged the father to send her to school. So that's what we have here and remember since this is in the setting of a small village a girl is merely seen as a helper you know a helper in or uh, to do the chores at home and she is expected or a girl child is expected to get married and help nurture a family. So that was the role already uh, the voices the views and opinions of a girl child and that was also the same thing that was impressed upon Susan. And uh, society's view on girl education is also reflected here. Remember the neighbors said, uh, said that girls have to stay home and keep the family anyway. You better get used to staying at home, being home, you know. All these kind of views and opinions were impressed upon to uh, Susan. Wonder why your parents are still educating you. When she was sent to college, people do not understand that why they are still investing on her education. So remember, we are taking a look at it through the views and opinions, or in other words, the voices. So what did Susan do? What shine does she have in order to overcome all these? So that's what we are going to find out. She was described as having a, uh, she was five, three in height, but a packet of energy, inquisitive child, and she's also a nature-inspired girl. You remember, uh, she was always inspired by nature, how trees uh, bloom and so on. And the flowering of trees is something that uh, also inspired her. A blossom felt, and then she found the courage to go and uh, do what she dreamed of. And then 
uh, we find that I want to do beekeeping. We find her very inquisitive here. She is always interested in it. You know, even when the father told her that it is not a girl's job and instead take Sandy to the workplace, she is always curious to learn. Why can't I come to the market? She would ask. Big enough to visit the bee farm. You know, when she was big enough to visit the bee farm, still she was being denied and yet she insisted to go and visit. And she does not like to be called dainty, filling in a stereotype role of a girl, you know. That is something that she tries to break away from. Stereotyped in the sense that the views and opinions of the community, the society, were being obeyed. But instead, she is the one. Later on, we also learned that she tried to earn money and uh, pay for her own tuition. And she also learned how to ride a bike. So that was the kind of, uh, she break away from those kind of stereotype roles that were expected of a girl. And so we can say that that is her shine, that is her determination to become an independent woman. Now, Mrs. Andrew called her as brave, courageous and determined. And she also advised her to be consistent. Remember, she was advised to be consistent and she did exactly that. When she was listening to the father's um, advices and uh, the same thing goes that with her hard work, willing to work for two hours to pay for her tuition. She was consistent and that was also one of her gifts, we can see. She also has a lot of respect and willingness to learn and heed advice. You know, advice, for Mrs. advice from Mrs. Andrew was paid heed to and she also respect her father and the grandmother, remember, the grandmother has a very strong role or impact in the life of Susan. She is the one we, in a typical setting, grandmothers are expected to tell us stories. And the kind of stories that she told Susan helped inspire her. And it is very much in sync with the story of Susan. Remember, she, the grandmother told her about the frogs that raised up a castle. And we learned that in that story, the frog, uh, frogs went on a race and to race up a castle and in the long run only one of them came out as the winner and when uh, when it was asked how it did it we find out that the, that frog just kept on climbing and he won eventually but he was deaf so in other words he did not listen to the voices of the naysayers naysayers are those people the negative minded people who say that you cannot do it you know you have this yes a stumbling block who bring out excuses but so in sync with our story that is susan with susan's story why because she did not listen to the neighbors who said who did not believe in the investing of a uh, girl child education. She did not listen to the brother who said that you are a dainty girl. She was much more than that. She, pro she has proven that. And in fact, she has also proven that it is not only a boy's job or a man's job to be uh, bee farming or to be farming. In other words, we also find here her success when she was able to, you know, uh, harvest bees beekeeping she learned the art of it and she made a bottle of her own and a, a bottle of honey and presented it to her grandmother as sunshine so again we have here the aptness the suitability of the title here so that is her success story she did not listen to the naysayers at all and we find her saying none at all to naysayers she did not pay heed to those kind of uh, naysayers or negative uh, feedbacks then we all, we can also say that her one of her shine is that she is also very positive uh, she has a very positive outlook that is one of her gifts we can also say in all sorts of circumstances she is always trying to break away she all she always see the good things so that's why she was able to be uh, become very successful dreams she dreams of becoming educated and at a very young age she dreamt about being educated and to be independent and she did that by listening to the advice of the elders such as mrs andrew and the father and that's how she can she was able to uh, make a mark for herself in fact for her future and she's also very independent you know uh, 
independent in the sense that when the family were not able to pay for her tuition, what did she do? She tried to work harder and she tried to earn money from that beekeeping and paid for her college fees. And Mrs. Andrew was very much right because uh, the father should have been very proud of Susan. So that's the story that we have here. And you know, eventually she was all, she also became a hero and uh, how did that happen? She remember she was gifted a bike in order to commute, to travel to her uh, uh, school or in fact college. You know, remember we are talking about village here, which is remote, that is cut off from the main city. So all this accessibility are quick uh, uh, trouble or difficulties that lies ahead for her. But uh, she was fortunate enough to be gifted a bike and to be riding a bike, think about it, a young girl riding a bike in order to get to her dream, that is to go to college and be educated. She did all that and with she started learning all about the brakes and clutch and so on and she tumbled a lot but she did not listen to all those things, the, the laughters or uh, the laughters that she met but she climbed up again and learned to ride that bike and and eventually she became a heroine in the community. How? Because we learned that the mother was unfortunately bitten by a snake and she, it was a very crucial time in order to get medical help. So what did she do? She told herself, think, you know, the, the word think. Instead of giving in into desperation, she, she make use of her mind, her education, and she think about what she can do. And eventually she was able to uh, save the mother. She was able to uh, take the mother to the city in the, hosp in the hospital. And that's how she saved the mother from this uh, tragic, uh, very tragic incident, we can say. And so this is the success story that we are talking about here. We are talking about a young girl who is living in a very remote village, who does not have enough money for her education, who cannot, even if she can afford it, who, can, who has to travel a long distance in order to get her education, who is facing a lot of naysayers who say that, who said that no girls are not supposed to go and work, no girls are not supposed to uh, get uh, higher education, no girls are supposed to get married at a certain age and be a good housewife, learn how to cook and so on. All these kind of stereotyped feedbacks that she uh, was uh, uh, given in the environment she was able to break away from it because of her shine, remember, that is the gift, that is what is her gift. She's a very determined, young, energetic, active girl and who is always curious to learn more. So that was her gift and because of her sheer determination, she was able to become an educated girl and become independent and in fact, uh, like I said, she has broke away from that kind of a stereotyped girl that we expect a young girl to be. So that is why we can say that she was indeed a packet of sunshine. She was indeed the heroine that very day when she saved the mother. And when eventually everybody uh, learned about this incident, about saving the grandmother, uh, you know, everyone said sunshine girl. So she is indeed the sunshine girl and her shine is that courage to believe in herself and follow her heart. Courage to believe in herself that she can get education, that she can work hard and pay for her tuition, that one fine day she would be able to break away from this kind of stereotyped roles that is expected of a girl child. All these kind of things she was able to overcome and that was her shine. That is courage and to have this conviction that you can do it. So when is the last time someone said that you cannot do that? because uh, the society or the voices or the opinions framed by certain uh, opinions that are being imposed on you. Like Susan, I'm sure we would all be able to overcome such kind of naysayers and keep striving if in fact uh, have enough conviction to believe in ourselves that one fine day we would be able to achieve our dreams if we are consistent and having the courage to believe ourselves or to believe in yourself. And on that note, we would be winding up today's class. Thank you all very much for joining me.